Today we found out that the governor passed a bill. People found guilty of a felony in Tennessee lose their right to vote. We're trying to show Governor Bunker Lee that we're here and that we have a right to protest. I wanted y'all to like come over because like I wanted to talk about like what's going on in our group, first of all, because it's hectic. Jaden and Rose have left the group. Hey, ma'am. Cyberbullying, Kennedy. I'm gonna deal with you and now it's just something that we're not gonna call right. I'm not in school presently because I'm pregnant. Hopefully, I'll go back to school. She wants to go and visit the Minister of Women Affairs. I'm a 17 year old activist that believes that all girls have the right to quality education, regardless of their pregnancy. I just hope that this, might, that this is actually going to change something. I was very happy to hear that Angela Merkel said she would not ratify the agreement as it is today. Those were like our sacred sites. These are where our ancestors died. Anybody really understands what this fight looks like. Like, I feel like I'm living a freaking nightmare. If we don't get it, shut it down! These problems are not just problems, they're my lived experience. If they really did love all of God's children, they would take these policies away. It's difficult to balance the fear that you have and the freedom that you aspire to have. We made this process come together. We ruled the world. I would love for our world leaders to take responsibility and do something. This is actually going to change something. Every child in Nigeria should be protected at all costs. This movement is never going to stop. We do not want to become a lost generation. Today I'm in the protest with Naya and Eden, and I really hope that people show up. It's important for people to show up at this protest today because this is a threat to our democracy. This is a threat to, yes, yeah, a threat to our democracy. I mean, we have a freedom of speech. We have a freedom to protest. So making a law against protesting is a threat to America's democracy, the democracy that America was founded on. I know that numbers don't matter, but when you're trying, but I feel like the more numbers you have, the more um, like the more intimidation we inflict. Exactly, and I told you to stop worrying because you kept worrying, you kept worrying, you kept worrying, you kept worrying, you kept worrying. Is that all? What time is it? I don't have my phone. Terry! <laughs> hey, boo. Hey, Terry. It's so good to see you. Me too. Hey, boo, can I hug you? Yeah, you're so tall. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but we should probably start. Yeah. Okay. You want to start? Okay, I get to make a phone. <laughs> I just want to thank everybody for coming out here. I'm actually kind of nervous. I didn't think anybody would show up. They're going to introduce themselves. European for Equality, a group working on ending all social and racial inequality. Anything's possible if we make it. Um, um, we love you. <laughs> So I just came home after Berlin um, last night and I'm happy to be home. I was a bit disappointed with the meeting, it's not as good as I expected it to be. But mostly I'm just really happy to be home and to be finally able to spend some time with my family. <laughs> I really came from an open-minded family and they taught me how to be someone that cares, someone that takes responsibility someone that listens to others as well. Um, although I'm still <laughs> practicing on that one. Both my parents are activists. Um, they, they raised me as an activist as well. Being aware of what the world looks like and what my role in it could be. What do you want to eat today? Um, 
there's bean switch already. There's some pepper. Um, there's a nice cucumber here. I really appreciate picking veggies with you. It's been a really long time yeah. since we had time to do that. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Mom, you're the very reason that I had to go and change the world. So <laughs> you remember when we went to the when we went to the refugee camp? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. In Dunkirk, I think. Dunkirk. Yeah. That must have been 2015 or 16, yeah, I think. Yeah, it's when the refugee oh. crisis started. I remember some of my friends telling me, you know, you shouldn't take your kids there. It's too shocking. Yeah. And then I thought, well, this is life as it is for such a huge part of the human population. How can we, you know, not look at it? How can we close our eyes? Exactly. So yeah. Yeah. I think like experiences like that just made me realize that there is a huge problem that I'm not currently seeing because I live in Europe, you know? Yeah. And that, it, that's I white mean, privilege. That, yeah, exactly. You've been an inspiration, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I, ju I just really love this so much. This is the best supermarket in the world, your own vegetable garden. Right now, like, especially in Europe, everybody should focus on the climate crisis, you know? So I want that to be a clear priority. And this is also why I really don't like how the press has gone so personal with me about those topics. The relationship I have with media is very personal and it really sucks because first of all they saw me as this young kid trying to change something but then I also became that young kid that is non-binary, then I became that kid that is also gay, then I became the kid that has a girlfriend, which is completely insane, it's not to the point, it's stupid but just imagine i wasn't out of the closet yet the media would have just outed me without me even giving consent about that like those things are really problematic being one year a completely anonymous family you know and then all of a sudden it was like i think it was like in in 24 hours time all of a sudden you were famous in belgium and it was so strange because we had no experience whatsoever to deal with such things. And then all the harassment started and yeah. death threats and me being your mother, you being underage. In the handbook of how do you bring up your children, I mean, there is no chapter on what do you do when your girl starts to change the world and people want to kill her. You know, that, that I couldn't go to advice to friends of mine yeah. and I felt hugely responsible and I thought if, if anything happens to Anuna or God forbid to Luca, her twin sister because she looks exactly like Anuna, it really was um, a very strange emotional roller coaster for me. I'd never been so proud in my life and I, I'd never been so scared in my life and all of that yeah. at once. Um, that was too much. That was too much. People think that I want to change their lives, that I want to take away all their luxury, that I want to take away all their money for something that in their eyes doesn't even exist. And for some reason, it makes a lot of people very aggressive. All the letters, the mails, the... Oh. Remember one day we got an envelope with shit inside? <laughs> You're laughing. I didn't laugh. I was the one opening that thing. <laughs> Funny. That wasn't funny at all. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I'm good, Mom. Mm. We're good. Mm -hmm.
Okay. How do you feel, Amaka? Oh. How do you feel? How are you feeling? What's your, on a scale of one to ten, what's your emotions like? How are your emotions today? Ninety-seven percent. Of what? Oh, <laughs> happiness. Oh, happiness. Ooh. What's tell me why you're happy? Why? Why are you happy? Maybe like it's fast now. <laughs> no way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> you feel like a superstar. Ooh. The national level. Positive, I'm scared though. Pray for me. Because I don't want to I told you, but I'm I'm um I'm going to California for a little while. I'm gonna be staying with my friend Tina. Oh, what for? Um, we're at, we're going to like, I mean, me and Tina have worked together on a bunch of stuff before, but we're staying with our mutual friend Andrea Bowers, who's this like feminist artist based in LA. So we're staying at her house and um, we're gonna be working on a script for a movie, hopefully. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Like a couple months ago, I started, you know, kind of just checking in with some of my friends and peers in um, LA to see sort of what was happening over there and if anybody was working on any different projects that I might be interested in. My friend Tina Puglisi, she is driving um, to South Dakota to pick me up um, from California and then we will head back to California together tomorrow. On a personal note, I, I've definitely, I'm definitely going to California just to like rest up a little bit and, and spend some time with, you know, chosen family um, and and focus on school for a little bit. Make sure that I have all the resources that I need to be successful in that aspect. What would it look like for you still being involved while you are away? Um, I think it would be, I think maybe we would just start um, doing more like thinking or, or, or writing like exercises, you know, something that everyone can do from a remote place, um, just so that like we can ensure, right, that like everybody's safe while we're in lockdown and, 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 and whatnot. Um, but, but I think maybe like we start creating our own content, right? Like as far as like what's, um, like what are our guidelines? What are our values? What are those things um, that make us united as a group, right? Um, and, and how can we put emphasis on those things so that other people can recognize them and become interested um, in, in the group and the work that we want to do. You know, we really start thinking about um, how to strengthen this foundation that we've already started. Mm, I really like that idea. And then if we make an Instagram, we can like put our little responses as the caption and stuff like that. Yeah, and we can so ask like, like followers and different things, right? Like, what? how do you see this? Get some community yeah. input happening. That sounds good. I really love it. Awesome. I think we're definitely on the same page and I am completely excited to keep thinking on this and uh, figure it out along the way. <laughs> Me too. All right. Thanks, Tyler. Yeah. I'll Don't call you later. Dok shake. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Fuck this. 
they took us. Back it up, please. Back it up, Bob, bro. <laughs> we definitely do not plan on stopping this fight. Because if we stop, then we're back to square one, and we cannot risk that. Black Lives Matter is not a moment, it's a movement, and this movement is never going to stop. Because Black Lives Matter, LGBTQIA plus lives matter, yes. trans lives matter, yes. those kids in ICE lives matter, yes. the indigenous people lives matter. Yes. We're not going to give up on this fight, we're definitely not. The fact that our governor, he signed this bill, he didn't let anybody know about him signing this bill, which is illegal. Somebody needs to call the UN. The UN seems kind of busy. I don't know where they've been. I know they see all these videos. <laughs> but Governor Billy not only signed, uh, not only signed the bill, he's also giving his troopers, his little minions, the permission to be as violent as they want to. Which is not right. Because these people are here to protect and serve us. We pay them. Yeah. We give them their uniforms. We pay for this building. Yeah. We pay for this building. We should be putting it back into education. Please. And public housing. But these people are too power hungry and they're too blinded by money to see what we actually want. It's not that they won't listen, it's that they fail to listen. Because when we try to speak to them, it's like it goes in one ear, in one ear and out the other. They're airheads. This is Vanetta Lewis. Would you like to speak? I have a twin sister. We have the same DNA and the same genes, obviously, but we're completely different people. Whenever I feel bad or I doubt about something, I always go to her. You say that you don't have hope, that you don't think you can really change something, but you did came to the strikes, right? I know, I know, but then you get confronted with all the issues and like, especially the tipping points can really frighten me. Yeah. So I you don't want to know. <laughs> right? I know That's you were gonna say, I know, it's like, I'm not people judging. should be yeah. informed, but I don't want to be informed because okay. I'm afraid. I can't be an activist like you because I would Freak have out. a depression already, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I get that. You hear me talking about it every day. Don't you think I'm super annoying? No, I'm just like really proud of you. I told you yesterday, right? You have the abilities that I don't to do what you do, you know? But then when you talk about how I can buy fast fashion, it's like, I know that you're right, but you know, I try to do other things to cancel it out. Sometimes I feel maybe you don't really treat me like in a fair way. Like you only see what I don't do mm -hmm. while I'll do a lot of things. Like my friends are going away this summer with their plane, but it's like inside of Europe. So I'm not going to go with them. But really? it's like a, yeah, but it's like a big sacrifice because I really want to go, you know? Well, thank you for doing that. Honestly. Yeah, so that's like, you don't really say that. Okay, I will pay attention to it. <laughs> and are you looking forward to uni a little bit? No, I'm really stressing out. But like, there's also, like, I didn't experience it yet, but I heard that it can also be fun. University, <laughs> so, but uh, first of all, I'm just like, I know, I know that I'm, that I'm losing out on a lot of things. Like, I know, I fucking hate that. But, and this is the thing, I don't do this because I like it. Like, why don't people understand about this? I would love for our world leaders to just take responsibility and do something. I but know. it's us kids who have to do that. But then when adults are like, oh, you, you should just go out more and have fun. Like, when I see you, like, university is a huge topic in your life. And with me, it's just like, oh, yeah, it's gonna start in two weeks, you know? I know, I know, but I feel bad for you. And that's why I said, like, I want to help where I can. How do you talk about this? Can you take two plates? Oh, 
I think we have always just been very, very different people. <laughs> and it, it was already in high school, but I do understand what you mean and your reasons. But I also think that we have different prior priorities because we were treated differently. For me, it was like really important to fit in and for you, you didn't. But like, I don't know if you really didn't care or you just didn't want to. Do you remember the third grade and maybe even the fourth? I really tried to fit in. Mm -hmm. I grew my hair longer, yeah. I was hanging out with a lot of people. I had a lot of boyfriends. Yeah, you did. You always did. <laughs> That's true. That was me trying to fit in. But then I actually don't know why you think I didn't fit in. Do you know why you didn't fit in? I'm not sure. You think it's because I'm critical. <laughs> mm. I do think that you judgmental yeah but like i think it's because you didn't fit in that you're judgmental so where did it start um i think definitely like in the beginning with you like trying to find out your sexuality and your gender like there was definitely especially with the boys at our school like they they bullied you for it mm -hmm. right and i think then like you decided like Instead of trying to be the same, you try to be different as much as you could. You know? Mm -hmm. Because you're like, I don't care if you bully me, I don't want your approval. That's interesting. Why do you think you didn't fit in? I mean... Why did you fit in? Because I tried fucking you hard. You tried? Is that why people fit in? Because they try? They try. Yeah. Yeah. I just noticed from a young age that if you wanted to fit in and be popular that you had to try that you had to change yourself for it I think because you you didn't really care what other people thought in high school that you found out way more what what is like important to you you know mm. yeah you're close to yourself I know how to see it differently but I mean I think you knew that I was gay before I knew it yeah <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, it's like I remember you trying to come out and I was like, dude, we have known for a few years now, but thanks though. <laughs> I remember having broken up with, I think, my last boyfriend. And then I really decided I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and get, like, the next one should be a girl. And I'm just gonna see how that feels. And yeah, that felt amazing. And then I was like, okay, I'm gay. But I'm okay. I don't know like how educated you are on the topic, but now I identify as non-binary, right? Yeah, yeah I Which, know. Okay, okay. So I don't care anymore. Also, journalists who ask me like, "What are you?" or people who ask me like, I get direct messages on Instagram from random people I don't know asking, "Are you a boy or a girl?" Really? Yeah. And then I'm like, I don't care. But it's like you know, if you could choose like. Without surgery or anything, would you like keep your boobs or not? No, but it's like, do you like your body or not? Like, yeah, I'm okay with my body. I think that's why I wouldn't, why I'm not transgender, I guess. Do you have like a, a vision board about like, if I, like I have certain things, like if I accomplish that, I can just be proud of myself and yes. die. Yeah. What is the biggest thing? You're not gonna like it. <laughs> no, like the biggest thing right now is like, I want to live in Spain, have my own apartment, make enough money to, like not too much, but like, I just want to be financially independent and live in Spain. That's okay. <laughs> and have a really nice apartment. Okay. I wanna, when I die, know that I've done everything I could to help people. And I don't care if it's by being UN Secretary General or by building houses in some village in Africa where they need it. I just want to have had that impact. So I guess you're going to have the fun life and I will come visit now and then, <laughs> if that's okay. <laughs> Ik was aan het extra waar mama vragen.
I'm working on getting packed. I'm working on making sure that all of my stuff um, is ready to go for tomorrow and that I've taken care of business in Pine Ridge before I leave. So are you for real about meeting Tina today? Do you want to take me all the way to Rapids? Would you just take me to the checkpoint? Swamp me there. The past few months have been really busy and it's felt definitely a little bit chaotic just with the continuing crisis. It really does hurt for me to see you go. Yeah, I mean, it hurts for me to leave, but also like, I don't know. I think that the whole depiction of like, that there's some, you know, like, awe-inspiring moment where the kid just like leaves the household all of a sudden and now everything is dramatically different is false mm -hmm. like y'all are my family and my parents like those things exist before time that's that's when an eagle is jumping out of her nest you know but you've been traveling the world that's true. That was scary as anything. But I also know that that's probably why I 100% need to do it. Yeah. And that's why I chose to go back to college. Because I was like, this scares me more than I've been scared of anything in my life. Mm -hmm. But I know that I'm fully capable of it, so I'd rather just do it. Yeah. And, and that's also why I'm going to California, because I feel like that'll be easier well no as, as long as you're in the right heart space yeah sometimes things get so hard yeah that it, it, it you don't feel like showing up every day that's true you know what i mean you, you don't your guts too. you don't feel like putting on your armor and showing up yeah sometimes it gets hard so hard. Really hard. I've been, I think, like, I've been consistently praying every day for the past, like, six months. Like, every single day. Like, like a con, like a conscious thing, you know, yeah, taking yeah. time. Not just thinking there. about right, it. Right, right, yeah. It sometimes not being thoughts like, are prayers. Not being like, God, I know you there. Right. Just checking it. But, but, like, specifically sitting, taking the time out of my day to sit and pray. And that's really helped. That's genuinely really helped me, like, more than anything ever. I mean, life is ceremony. Get yourself. See? You face the world head on. Standing on an official building of Tennessee or being in front of state troopers and not scared and not being scared of them and looking them in the eye felt powerful. It felt like power knowing that I'm not afraid of the Governor Lee or afraid of being arrested, you know? We have a freedom of speech. We have a freedom to protest. So making a law against protesting is a threat to America's democracy. Wait, while on the steps, I was scared because I thought the state troopers would come down and for real like really? bum rush us and then arrest all of us for even being there. I really wasn't concerned about the um, state troopers when we were on the stairs. I was actually happy that people like they were like, woo, yeah, Kennedy. The thing is, like, America shouldn't have to wait for change when you're older and you're able to run for office. It should already be changing. That's why, like, like when you were doing your speech, she was like, and I'll be sure to change it. I was like, we're doing what we're doing now to change it. It's like, when, like once we get older, it's not something that we have to worry about. Once we went up there and chanted, like, the Black Lives Matter or, um, what is it? Hey, hey, ho, ho, government has got to go, like, while on the steps. And, like, the troopers were just like, I was like, y'all are ugly. <laughs> I don't think that, um, it made me happy. I like when I said, pack it up, Paw Patrol. I liked how many people came. And, like, because, like, a lot of people who did come, we already, like, knew them. Like, it didn't matter what happened. They yeah, just, I think they're here for the movement. the movement. Then teenage drama. We didn't. We shouldn't have even posted it. We should have said, "Em Rose, I'm sorry for um That's for not playing I, a support cast." Took um everything down. I was like, actually, no one has to know. It's not their business. It just is what it is. We actually have talked. Um, I had apologized to Em Rose, saying that I could have 
um, handled the situation better. She was also sorry about how things went out and how she could have chosen things, some things to be better. I mean, we only are human and we're, we are really still young. So when you're young, you do make many mistakes. Yesterday is yesterday, today is today. Today was a new day, today was an amazing day. Today was a wonderful day. We mustn't dwell on the past. People who came, believe us. The people who left, they just aren't actually yeah, they, here for us. Yeah, they aren't actually here for us. So and the movement, period. Not us specifically. Exactly. I'm actually really drained right now. I can literally go home, take a shower, brush my teeth, wash my face, and go to sleep. But good yeah, this was a really good workout. Knowing that I'm able to mobilize so many people when talking about problems in America, it feels like America's old system is burning. It feels like we are getting reformed. I mean, it may be a slow process, but it's definitely something. So it definitely feels powerful. I feel like the old, I feel like we can change the world, not just America, but the world. <gasps> Remember when we used to post like this? <laughs> We're not gonna stop, especially right now because of what's happening in America. We as Teens for Equality can go through this stuff and still be together. Ooh, yeah, just like that. <laughs> Down a little bit on your end. I never imagined being a mother as a teenager. Not my wedding dream. But it's all good. Because the lead is done, we cannot go back. We cannot turn back the hand of time. So today has been busy. I went for my scam today and it's a girl. <laughs> I'm very happy. When we went for the scan, my mom wasn't there, Sha, but I, I, I wish she was there. These are some of the things I have for now. Outing bag, breastfeeding pillow. La 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 la. <laughs> Very soon, we'll be going for baby shopping. Very soon. So, the type of future I plan for, or I wish for my baby to have, I sure don't want her to go through violence. Mm. I don't. I, I want her to have a violence-free life. Mm. I don't want her to go through the same thing I went through, or I'm going through presently, or where I don't where she doesn't get enough to eat. I don't want that one to be part of our experience. So by God's grace, I'll try to be 
a, the best mother I can be. So I'm going to try as much as possible to stop the eradication of pregnant girls from school. I'll be sorry, the expulsion of pregnant girls from school. That's my topmost priority. Because I know how it feels being expelled from school ah, after paying all the money and then you don't get to write your exams. You are being deprived of that right. It's not fair. So that's what I'm going to try as much as possible to stop. I can talk about Adelaide for hours. She did a TED talk with me. She sailed to Latin America with me. She was in the Amazon forest with me. She's now interning in the apartment with me. We're gonna live together in Brussels. We're gonna do the same studies at the same universities. Insane how we kind of found each other and are just completely in sync. And we've been in sync for so long. We are, I don't know, I think we're an unbreakable team. And I would have never been able to do what I've done without her. When I'm here, or for example, when I'm on a mountaintop, I get super relaxed and I get to see yeah. things from out of perspective and stuff, you know what I mean? Maybe we should make it a weekly thing. Friday after uni, we round it up with a walk through nature. That stressful moment when the media got really personal with you. <laughs> what time? No, I know. Always. <laughs> you Okay, so Julie, my ex-girlfriend, mm -hmm. I remember like she came to one of our uh, strikes and like she, she didn't walk next to me, but she was like taking pictures for the website. Yeah. And then I just kissed her because she was like, I'm going to go to the back. She gave me a brief because she was gone. And next day, next thing I know, all the newspapers, Anuna David has a new girlfriend. This is Julie Chimet, and then he made her the French photographer, <laughs> which is like not even true. And then they made this whole story up and it was insane. And then that night I actually had to go to a talk show and that was like the subject of the talk show, like tell me about your girlfriend. I was like, what? I was not here to talk about that. I actually had it last year as well, a yeah. couple of times that I, um, I woke up and there would be <clears throat> like a media scandal about me. Also like where I used to say things in articles and they would just put one sentence. I used to like wake up, have these things, having already 17 missed phone calls of journalists of all medias, like, can you answer, can you answer, there's articles, we want your quotes. And then, you know, it just stresses me out. Of course. And then you're trying to, you know, take care of climate change, try not to get fucked by the media, but also please your family because you want to spend time with them. And there's, I feel like, it's so hard for people out there to realize that because they're not in it, so they don't understand. I think we can sit on that trench there, because that would be nice. Or maybe we can, maybe oh, we can yeah. go sit here. here. Nice. Yeah. We should have brought beers. <laughs> I mean, we're literally missing that. That's yeah. it. Everything else is perfect. Are you ready for uni? Um, I'm really excited about uh, our cut, actually, where we're going to live together and stuff. And me too! Me yeah. too! I no, hope, literally. because since we're living with four people, I hope the two others that are going to join yeah. are going to be climate activists. <laughs> That's going to be an issue, man. So I'm going to be starting university soon. And to be honest, I'm really anxious um, because obviously I've been working in the European Parliament as an intern and I'll still be doing that when I go to university. And it has given me the time to really be an activist full time, all the time. And I'm not sure with all the lectures and classes and exams and assignments, how much time I'll still have to be an activist. And for me, that's definitely a priority. So I hope I can make it work, but I'm, I'm pretty anxious about that. And also just living with people that I don't know, like what if they're what if they're climate change deniers or, or what if they think that what we're doing is ridiculous? What if they don't care and you know and, and just still eat meat every night and and, and buy fast fashion etc it would just i would have a hard time to cope with that because then your values and principles are completely different than the people that where you're living with so it's hard and also just knowing that university is gonna 
take up so much of my time. I'm just stressed about, I don't know, how, how am I going to balance it all? But I guess we'll see. Are you excited? I really am. I still don't, uh, when I talk to friends about it, they're like, how the fuck are you going to combine what you do exactly. now with university? Like my sister, she literally called me this morning. She was like, you know that you're fucked, right? Yeah, literally. I was like, no, but like, we can try to, like, I'm going to just like find a way. There, she's like, there is no way. There's no way you can do what you do now and go to uni. We literally work together, we're best friends, and now we're gonna live together, it's gonna be hard. I know, it's very intense. It's an intense relationship. Yeah. <laughs> like, anyone I ever met, I cannot work with them like I work with you. No, but no, not to be cute. It's okay. like, when I say something, you can, like I can say one half of sentence, you say the other one, you know? Like it's just so efficient, so quickly. I have to say very little, for you to actually understand and do something. Yeah, like today when you were like, do we? No, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you. Good that you know. Like at one time, I think in the future, in like 10 years, if one of us becomes UN Secretary General, we're gonna be like, sorry, it's gonna be a two person job now. <laughs> Imagine. Yeah, well, like, it, it won't sorry, be. Can, can she come with me? Is that a thing? I mean, we're not very fucking soulmates, but you know what I mean? But without I, the sex part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always without the sex part. Are you ready? I'm ready. 17 hours. Hang on, I have to get some medicine. Wait, but wait. This is your stuff, is it? No. <laughs> no. Yeah, okay, well, this base is good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, is that it? Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> you sure you got everything? Yeah. Your IDs, your cards, She's all got that a stuff. card. You got yeah. a card? You got your wallet, you got... Um, Where are you going, California? Uh -huh. Yeah, we're going to go Standing Rock first, and then, and then we'll be in Cali. Uh. Like, if you guys don't mind putting down a prayer for us before we get on the road. Yeah. You know, I understand my responsibility. I'm taking yeah. this young you one. You guys are rolling together. You yeah, guys yeah. Are... Now let's go do that. Is that what you were doing just now? Yeah. This is some white sage. Today, I always feel honored to um, ask to say a few words for prayer and guidance and strength and for good health. Our ancestors always told us that um, these are um, our ways to uh, for protection and have a good journey into the future. I'm just, this is my kid, you know what I mean? Oh, no. <laughs> this is my kid. I understand the responsibility. <laughs> my kid, the, fu the future is on my shoulders. I understand. Literally. I'm, I'm just, yeah, that's why I thank you for this because I want, I feel protected when we do this. Oh, it's so nice to meet you. Thank How you, you doing? So we, we can plan it really. We're going strong. We'll go strong. We want support the yeah. prayers. All right, let's do this, Tox. All right. One, one more for the well, time for the insurance. I'm a little sad to be leaving, of course, but I know that right now. Um, this is what's best for me, and this will allow me the space to put myself first so that I can carry the weight of my work. I can't believe this is happening. We are in the same car. <laughs> 